Catherine. Um, hello, everyone. It's great so, that so many people could join us for, for this session. I know that um, some of us have been, um, well, we've all been forced into a situation where uh, we've had to use technology um, a lot more than we did in the past to communicate with our students uh, and teach, etc. And I know that um, the summer um, last year was incredibly difficult in terms of making sure that all the students got through their exams and their assessments and, and everything else. And that went across the board through people taking GCSEs and A-levels, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we are going to be pressed for time in this session. Um, the, basically, the session, I'm going to start off by, by just going through a few slides about blended learning um, and online learning as part of blended learning. Um, and then really the second part of the session, uh, we're going to introduce Ingrid um, Ovenstone, who's the, the, the headline sponsor uh, and joining us all the way from New Zealand at um, crazy o'clock over there um, <laughs> to, to talk about a, a platform that they've been using in New Zealand and in other areas of the world, in Africa and across Asia um, as, a, as, a, as an option for people to have a look at and potentially utilise in their own organisations back here. So we've got a, a little demonstration of their facility as well. Um, so I think everybody probably is used to the sort of um, you know, online etiquette type stuff. But uh, if I could just ask people to mute themselves while uh, the session's going on, if people want to... Um, speak then uh, if I could just ask that on the bottom there you'll see an icon that says reactions if you could just press on reactions and raise your hand as I'm doing so now uh, you'll see a little um, hand appear on your screen that will give us an indication that you'd like to speak and then you can also lower your hand um, once once you've finished we've also got the chat facility um, which is, is down there that uh, myself, Catherine, uh, Alex, Rebecca will, will keep an eye on throughout the session. So if anybody's got any points or anything, um, please put them in there and we'll keep an eye on the chat facility as well. Um, we're going to try our best to keep to time because we've got another session starting at half past four. Um, so without further ado, I am going to make a start and I'm about to share my screen. Um, but first of all, um, I'm just going to launch a quick question. Um, can you all see that? Hopefully, you'll all be able to answer. Yeah. Just if you've had any experience of blended online learning before the COVID outbreak. So, I'll just give you another couple of seconds. Somebody might have their mic on there. Okay, last couple of seconds. We've got 38 out of 42 answered. Last couple of people. Two people haven't answered at 42. Okay, we'll just leave it there then. So we are very, very close here. Um, there's the results. 45% yes and 55% no. So it's... Um, it's a split split audience. We've got some some experience and those that were probably forced into um, having to learn very quickly uh, and, and adapt to the to the situation um, that we all saw ourselves in. So, can you see my screen? Can. Yes. Can. That's very good. Okay, so I'm just going to go through some slides. Um, blended learning. Um, sort of quoted this as the as the new normal um everybody's having to do it i'm not i don't want this is just a a, a quick run through of, of certain things so this switch to remote learning um just some just some ideas and some tips here um really it doesn't have to be a technical sort of show it um i think people have to remember that it's the passion for the subject that the students are really there for they're not there to be digital experts. It's about keeping it simple, keeping things comfortable uh, and remembering that learning can come in many different guises and not all remote learning has to centre around technology and I'll, I'll come on to a few ideas in a second. And, and also we have to be mindful that developing contact, um, you know, not everybody is digitally rich, not every um, 
young person or person in the country has access to oh, reliable Wi-Fi. Sure you know. Oh, yeah. If I could just remind people to turn their mics off, please. Um, so just being mindful when developing content that um, not everybody has access. Some people will be using very small screens, um, and some people may not may be sharing um, equipment with siblings, etc. Um, and offer a structure so that students get used to this um, form of learning. And as I said, I'm not trying to teach anybody anything because half the people are, uh, are, are very familiar with um, online learning and, and digital learning. Um, but these are just some ideas and hopefully you'll take something away from, from this session. So this blended learning, a mixture of synchronous delivery where people come together and asynchronous delivery where students are working um, at their own pace and uh, their, in their own homes, etc. So the blended learning approach is, is obviously a combination of the two. Um, and it's being looked at as a, as, as a very, um, particularly in, the, in these times with digital technology development as a way forward, regardless of the, the situation that we, we faced ourselves in. So it was always gonna be uh, a tool that um, was very much going to be used. So some pedagogical approaches to blended learning. Um, I think it's important that le learning episodes are presented in a consistent way so that students become very um, accustomed to, to what they expect. It's about expectation. It's the same in the classroom, the same in the kitchen, the same in the restaurant. Um, agreeing a code of conduct and that blend of having times where people get together and then times where, where students are, are working on their own. This is some of the research that I've come around and there's sort of agreement from people that are developing um, blended learning approaches that uh, synchronous learning should be no longer than around 45 minutes uh, per session and support in, in a synchronous uh, format, chunking learning together of low, no longer than 20 minutes. Um, and as with, as with any form of learning, feedback is vital. Um, students need to know where they stand. So regularly, regularly feedback, two individuals, each task, verbally written, um, formative, summative, assessments, um, again, in, in various formats so that people um, are not learning in one specific sort of style. As I said, code of conduct. So uh, I think uh, Cheryl, um, sorry, Ingrid, Cheryl was coming, but Ingrid's taking her place today. Um, it's very important that we do have code of conduct and I think um, as we're getting used to things, um, you know, I've been to some lessons where 40 students uh, have their screens turned off, which I, personally I don't think is, um, is uh, very sort of proactive and, and um, engaging to talk to a blank screen. Um, I know that people will say, well, they're still in their bed clothes and they might be um, embarrassed of their surroundings and things like that, but they can put um, backdrops um, behind them. Um, and I think it is important that we, we look at these things and make decisions as to what our codes of conduct are and, and how we sort of communicate with, with students online and, and make sure that, um, that they engage as much as possible. So just simple things like muting the microphones, raising hands, agreeing whether webcams are on or off, black backgrounds that are appropriate or blurred so there's not too many distractions, and then even things of advice about lighting, you know, not sitting in front of a window um, so that uh, the screens are clear, all, all these sort of little chip tips and using chat boxes for, for, for questions. So now what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a second and um, just going to go back one and I'm going to put you into some breakout rooms and I'd just like you to look at these two questions here um, and maybe take a screenshot of these or uh, quickly write it down, but I'd like you to introduce yourself, your name, where you're from, and what challenges you faced switching from blended to online learning. And then furthermore, I'd like you to um, think about what community means to you and what sort of community you would want for your course and your students. So, I thought you're not going to get away with this quite so easily. So we've got 46. So. I'm just 
going to look at this. Okay, sorry about that. Now I think we can access my microphone. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. 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 Hello, we can hear you. Excellent. Hi, Everybody how are you? Can unmute, mute themselves, please. I don't, I don't quite know. I, I was we were waiting to see what was happening. I've never been into a place like this before. <laughs> Mate, can you unmute yourself, please? Um, Becky, can you unmute yourself, please? Grant and Helen, can we see you? Are oh, you I'm very your... sorry. Video sorry. On? Oh, that's better. Grant, are you there? Grant? Can you hear us? No, we, we can't hear Grant. I don't know, he can't hear us, maybe. So, okay, so we've got um, May, Lisa, Helen, and Grant, who we can't see or hear. So, uh, Becky and I are from the Chefs Forum, so we, we, we probably wouldn't be uh, uh, able to, to include ourselves in our discussion, but we're def definitely... Uh, listen on so uh have have your discussion we need, okay. we need to remember what the actual question do you remember what the actual the actual discussion topic was okay, sorry i just um i i lost uh, power on my battery so i missed what the question was before i came in so if you wouldn't uh, mind repeating well, that would be great see... i can't the chat's disappeared now hang on uh... neil you're there Oh, Neil, dear. can you hear us? Yeah. Is there any way that you can put that the question that everyone's supposed to be discussing into the <laughs> chat, please? Because no one can yeah. remember because it popped up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. I can't see it at the moment. We can't see you at the moment, Neil. I've got you. Hang on. I'm back. I'm back. No, because the chat disappeared and now it's come back. Yeah, am I still a co-host? Um... Oh, no, you're not. I don't know what happened. Here we go. Because now you put everyone in the room. I've only got the people in my room. You're in my room. But I can't see anyone else now. I can see you, Alex, Neil, Helen, Lisa, um, Wendy, May. I don't know if Grant's there now. No, we can't see or hear Grant. Is Grant supposed to be in your room? He's I don't busy. know. We can see him, but not him. We just is in his name on a blank black screen. Oh, hang on. I can put different people in different rooms. So my um, I'm on now on my phone because.
I'm yeah. going to type a message to everyone. Are we supposed to go into the breakout room? Yes. Kevin? We're supposed to go into the breakout room, are we? Because I've just declined that now. Oh, sent it to me again, sorry. <laughs> we've, just, we've just lost some people. Have you taken them out of our room, Neil? Yeah, I'm throwing them in somewhere else. <laughs> All right. <laughs> my, my computer just... I'm going to have to ask me again because I can't get there now. <laughs> So, oh, Derry's back. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's just asked me to send in the link. Hello again. <clears throat> Hello again. How you doing? Good. Is it? Have you started yet? We have, but we're in breakout rooms. Neil's getting oh. all technical and putting us in breakout rooms. Oh, great. Oh, dear. What's the discussion? The discussion is um, just your experience of blending learning and what online community means to you. Right. I'm going to close them all in a minute. So, which room is this then? No, this, this, this is the best room. <laughs> I need to put us all in. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got Wendy, she's the only person from the college. Oh, where's Derry's gone? Are you able to put Wendy with some other people from a college? Because Grant, we can't see to hear Grant or, talk, or see him. So I can move Wendy. I've just got to find which room this is. Oh, don't worry, I'll join into discussion when they come back. It's done this automatically, randomly. Didn't like me. So Wendy, let's have a little conversation between ourselves. So what's your experience of blended learning? Well, what a topical question. <laughs> on remote learning from home we've been operating blended learning since um september um only having the learners in college for about 80 percent of the uh, sorry uh, in the college for about 20 percent of the time so blended learning has become the norm so we were, lucky, so we were quite lucky at the beginning of the year weren't we in september that we could send chefs in still but obviously that was uh now we can't uh, do that because it's um remote learning now which is yeah and well we could, it's, uh, in Wales, we've probably been a bit of ahead of the game. We've had a lot more practical sessions and learners in college a little bit more, especially in hospitality, than a lot of our partners have. So our hospitality yeah. learners have had more, they've probably had 80% in college and 20% at home. But we developed our own platform and um, we've had to train staff, well, all through the summer on um, teaching remotely. And of course, with safeguarding and everything else, we can't force learners to put the cameras on so you're teaching into a, a chasm, <laughs> you mm, know, it's yeah. like it's like off standing on stage in a club and nobody being there to, to hear you perform. Um, they don't have to put the cameras on and they don't have to put the mics on. So all the interaction is through the chat bar. So it's really hard. So for blended mm. learning for us is a whole different ball game, a whole turning everything on its head. Um, but staff have done really, really, really well. Um, Hard, hard to engage learners. So Neil, when Wendy's head of department when, at Pembrokeshire yeah. College. Yeah, Wendy, I was just so, gonna say, it's say, saying on my screen that you haven't joined and that you're on an iPad. <laughs> I am on an iPad, is that not allowed? I couldn't get, I, I don't know. <laughs> it, it just says room 10 um, is Christoph, Erica, Julie and Mark and Wendy is supposed to be in room 10. It said Wendy's iPad not joined, so it uh, seemed, yeah, well, I didn't join. I, I didn't join the, your iPad. I didn't join yeah. when the link came no. up. No, so that's what it means that you didn't take the invitation. It's fine because you're stuck with the hosts now. You're stuck with me, Becky. And... I'm, I'm fine yeah, with that. Catherine, oh, Catherine's not here. Where's Where's Catherine? Where have I you don't put know where Catherine's gone. Ka Catherine's gone into room nine. And I don't know who Grant is. We can't hear him or see him. And no, no, I'm not too sure. Right, here we go. I'm going to close them now. I'm going to close the rooms. So we're coming back. <clears throat> mm. 
We're back. Ah, everyone's back. Right. So, I had a bit of a panic then. As soon as I set up the rooms, my um my internet crashed, um, <clears throat> which is not very helpful. So I'm glad that I actually set up those rooms. Otherwise, I wasn't going to be able to join you. So I'm, I'm now broadcasting from my phone. I've hot spotted my phone. Um, so I'm using that for for the next uh, for the remainder of the session. So could I just say um, or just ask? Uh, your thoughts then is any would anybody like to um, just give us a little bit of a couple of feedbacks just a couple of groups we won't go around but if anybody would like to volunteer on um, any feedback in terms of uh, some of the some of the circumstances or, or what the online community means to you yeah um, I'd like to actually nominate Darren to share with you what local college have actually implemented because it's quite impressive so Darren do you want to take it away please yeah, okay, so um, the community part of the college is one of our um, strategic drivers, so it's part of our what, what we look at for the, for the local area. So we, we have a Junior Chefs Academy that we're running, which has ran, ran for quite a while now, but this, it's now in partnership with Harrison Catering. So we use one of our members of staff as the, the main person in there, but then we also um, use Level 3s to help in the system. So Level 3s will um, sort of apply for it, if you like, as like a, a job. Um, we'll start off with a couple of them and by the end of the term we've got a, a lot of them that want to actually join in and, and be part of that as the, as the local community um, and it's worked really well for us over the years so like I say it's grown now um, we now call it our Junior Chefs Academy and it works really well for feeding into the college as well um, for the full-time courses we, we've got our own cookery school as well which we run on sat evenings and Saturdays um, obviously we've not been able to do it at the moment because of Covid but our Weekend course, we'll do anything from game cookery to cake deck, um, all manner of things. And they always sell and they're always re really, really busy. So that local community is a really big feel to the college and the, and the local area and, and the schools. Brilliant. That's a, that's a great answer. OK, I'm just going to put you one 30 second challenge. I just want everybody to write into the chat in one word what online community means to you. So I'll just give you 30 seconds and we'll have a look at some of these answers. <laughs> Okay, so we're getting lots of things around support. There's a couple of people that are going a bit insane um, with it all. Um, coming together, working together, supporting, kindness, that's really important, partnership, um, connection, teamwork, links, sharing, togetherness again, um, a new way of learning. Um, Somebody's apologised. They they have no volume. Um, Grant, it was Grant. He's uh, he was struggling. That's why we couldn't hear him. Uh, Alex, he's struggling. Communication. I also think trust. I, nobody's mentioned trust, but um, I think because people are sitting at home, there's a maybe an element of of, of trust. Um, learning difficulties. Yes, definitely. Um, so what I'm going to do is go back to the slides. Um, I'm going to share my screen again. One second. Can everybody see my screen? No. 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 Uh, hang on. Yes, yeah. now we can, Neil. Okay, so I'll just finish these last few slides off then. 
and then I'm going to ask you a couple more things. So, in terms of student engagement and um, activity, so I think it can be one of those things that uh, different people will have different expectations in terms of defining community and engagement. Um, but it's important that students um, can rely on this so that they can discuss um, with, with one another and they have an opportunity to network and group work. Um, but also the tutor relationship or the facilitator teacher relationship, knowing how knowing that the teacher knows who you are for, for bigger groups and bigger courses. I'm, I'm not sure how many people that would, uh, would apply to. Um, but having that assurance of getting help when you need it um, and, and that there's an opportunity for, for in-class engagement. So building this online community that I've referred to so that this sort of safety and trust mechanism and all the other things is about setting the tone early, remaining consistent, um, having little icebreakers, regardless of class size, making sure that people are, are interacting as quickly as possible, being explicit about expectations, as I was talking about earlier on, and having that sort of community and that opportunity uh, for, for students to discuss. And that goes for asynchronous learners as well. And, and really using that class time very valuably, especially if it's shorter than usual, to make sure that there is that good interaction. So breaking that monotony, you know, people sitting in front of screens, it does get monotonous, it gets tiring, people start falling asleep. Um, and using these simple facilities, the chats and the polls for rapid answers and sources of discussion, and utilising the breakout rooms and giving students space so that they can work together and soliciting those questions. So really prompting students to ask um, for, for those questions. So in terms of group work and active work, keeping learning active and collaborative, using those rooms, having agreements and charters, especially if there's projects, um, sort out roles. You know, we were very rushed in what we've just done, but maybe um, assigning roles and people to have certain hats so that they report back on certain aspects of, of, of projects so that they all have a, a role to play and an evaluation to put forward. And really to utilise that time as a group of, I've said, high stakes work, but essential work. And then perhaps using the additional learning, the synchronous things that students can, can learn at their own pace and, and do their own things in time. So in terms of discussion boards, and I'll share these slides, I think they should be sort of topic driven, um, very much around conversations, open ended questions directed to reading and topics and prompts. Um, but also the opportunity to have a, maybe a social discussion board where people can have a coffee break or a social space and students can use those, those areas to post questions and workshop um, together. And also maybe a, a discussion board that can be a QA and a directly with teaching staff. Um, but asking students to post their, their breakout room um, work in, in discussion boards so they can, they can do those sorts of things. And then when it comes to synchronous delivery is a little example of a of a you know, pre-made um, bespoke sort of training manual for, for mathematics on the side, which you can get from places like BBC. Um, but just some ideas about setting, reading podcasts, watching, um, you know, posting discussion boards, as I've said, building mood boards from Padlet or um, even a, a Google Doc, um, TikTok, which the students are all using, all the young people, my children are using it all the time, asking students to do a, a short video. Um, Canva, which is an infographic that they, uh, they can build, um, posting find, findings on, 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 on different walls and creating videos with questions, etc. And one idea that I said didn't involve a lot of technology at the beginning is even things like a scavenger hunt where they, you know, they have to find sources of information or bits of information requiring them to to communicate with each other um, over a topic that may have nothing, may be food related or anything along those lines that they can they can come back without having to rely on on utilization of technology. Um, in terms of synchronous delivery, flipping the learning, getting the students very active. Um, I'm sure everyone's used in Kahoot and quizzes and guest speakers, industry partners. Um, people have taken a lot, you know, there's been a lot of group visits via 
via Skype to, to various um, locations, um, which has gone down really well, um, using the whiteboard features and, and doing live demonstrations. But I think with, with um, particularly uh, digital learning is about that settling down period. So it's always trying to add that sort of five minutes at the beginning, five minutes at the end, just to allow for that sort of settling period uh, as well. Um, special education release that came up as one of the one of the points uh, a second ago about differentiation. Um, some students don't like working in groups. You know they can't. Um, they they just find it too difficult. So it's about making sure that we meet students individually to reassure them. Um, sorry, jumped ahead a bit too fast. Um, and it's about routine and keeping small tasks. Um, daily tasks to complete and regular feedback and communication um, and online delivery, simple fun tasks work very well and, and getting feedback I don't know what's happening with my computer here but um, feedback gauging how students are feeling, looking at issues that you're unaware of, you know really investigating, trying to find out how you can improve your course instead of waiting for the course evaluations at the end and giving students that opportunity to safely express their needs um, and, and communicate, let people know that you've, uh, you've read those and adjust things and, and communicate backwards. Um, just a little image there that might be quite helpful in terms of design, um, some structure, uh, some color, contrast, use of images, links, um, not just, you know, to describe your link rather than just saying click here. Um, plain English that's very uncomplicated and, and straightforward and the way you present tables and structures. So just some ideas on how to easily access um, information. Uh, recording so that people can refer back to it, setting aside some time for well-being and communication and, and just generally mixing things up and being daring, you know, try something. If it doesn't work, you know, don't get too hung up about it. Um, and, and letting people know that there is a social channel um, to, to encourage them to, to share their, their issues and, and generate that group and community interaction. And then I've just left this little remote link here, which is on the slide. Um, this is a colleague of mine actually developed this, but this is a, a link where um, practitioners are constantly um, just putting ideas and, and little suggestions and, and resources online. So once you have this presentation, you'll be able to um, go on to this Wakelet compilation of ideas from other practitioners just to share uh, best practice. And then my, my final advice, really, three things. Um, and this is, this is a collection, a collation of, uh, of different things that I've, I've been involved in over the last uh, sort of year or so. It's really to keep it simple. Don't use too, too many digital tools. Um, focus on that interaction and engagement and really don't try to recreate what you can recreate in a classroom because it, it probably it won't work. Um, so that is the end of the, the sort of slides. But just the last couple of questions for a poll, just so I can sort of gather some, um, some, some thoughts here. Could I just ask you to... Um, to gauge how confident you are in terms of your your confidence when teaching online. So one being low and 10 being the max. Okay, so there we go. We've got some pretty experienced people there by the look of things, um, but quite a range across the board. Most people sort of around that middle area between um, five and eight. And then just ask this one. just to see which tools are being used uh, the majority, so.
Okay. I'm going to end it now. So, seems like a lot of people using Teams, Kahoot, Canvas, Google Docs, not so much the other things. Okay. And then my last. Oh, you could only select one option. Oh, that was supposed to be multiple options on that one. Um, and then the last one. Um, Do you use discussion boards with your students? Okay, last couple of seconds. Okay, so pretty 50-50 almost on that, 55-45, pretty similar to the to the first session, uh, first set of polls, sorry. So, so now I'm going to, as I said earlier, I'm going to introduce um, our headline sponsor. Um, so now I'm going to just show you a little video. If I can get it up here. Sorry, I had these preloaded, but it seems to have disappeared. So can you see my screen? No. No. Should I, should I do it, Neil? I've got them here. Can't see the screen yet. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can now. No volume. No, we haven't got any sound. Uh, there's no sound to the video. Yeah, having a little bit of a technical hitch. Um, Alex, is there any way you can, you can get the screen back and share it from your machine? With yeah, Neil, I don't think Neil can hear us. Can you hear us now? No, I think he's probably listening to the actual video himself. Oh, sorry. Okay. Is there a problem? Yeah. Yeah, we couldn't. We couldn't hear anything. I, I'm going to share it. I, which film? Which film is it? I've got, I've got the. Um, Have you got the two links? Yeah. Is it the? Hang on. Yeah, can you share <laughs> the Let me get one. it up. Bear with me. And just share the sound first, then play. Yeah. I did that. Is it the student demo? Isn't it? I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's not that one. It's the other one.
I can share sound. Um, I'll do it again. Uh, who's sharing? International Culinary Studio offers you a comprehensive online cooking course. You'll become a fully qualified chef with internationally recognized qualifications. We'll provide you with all the tools and knowledge in our easy to follow program so you can learn the skills you need to succeed. You'll benefit from one-on-one -on -one tuition with our world-class chefs and instructors. Record your process and upload your finished creation for assessment. Become a part of our online chef community through live streamed lectures, webinars and online events. Our menu-based tutorials encourage innovation and creativity, providing hundreds of recipes for serving to your friends and family. Enroll today and invest in your future at internationalculinarystudio.com. So, do, does anybody have any questions on that at the moment while I set up the next one? I think what's important to communicate um, is that we can actually tailor make a similar um, platform, like a learner management system, um, tailor made to your individual college. So, it would have your college branding on it. The content is already sorted, it's using Canvas, isn't it, Neil? Which you touched upon in the presentation. So, can you just explain about a bit about Canvas, please? Yeah, I'm just going to uh, actually load the, the next one. Um, just bear with me one second. So, can everybody see my screen? No, not yet. No. <clears throat> I've got it here ready to go if you want me to see. Should I do it? He's done it. No. 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 I think because the, the world's on Zoom and Teams at the moment, the signal is a bit dodgy, isn't it? And I'm going to be demonstrating our learning management system, which we have put together using a fully online uh, learning model, and which enables students to study Ooh. online. They can work from their home kitchen or from a workplace, a commercial kitchen, and um, ultimately earn an internationally recognized qualification. We can tailor make our system to suit any college or any school and all of our programs that we offer currently have already been recognized by the World Chefs Association and by Sitting Guilds in the UK to offer as qualifications. So if you were interested in um, hosting your own online platform, we could develop that for you in conjunction with all of our materials. A quick uh, student would when they enroll, they would be sent a login and their a unique login number. And this is an example I'm just going to be showing you of our global certificate. The student's dashboard would look similar to this. 
So once the students receive their login, they obviously will then um, jump onto their course. I'm just going to start off by showing you a little bit of the um, USPs that the program has. So each student would set up their own pro profile and notification preferences. They would add, add their own uh, photograph, for example, as well as when they would like emails or messages to come through to them. So this would stop messages coming through at any time of the day or night. They then also complete their ePortfolio. This means any material that they complete or submit during their program, when on successful completion, they could download their full ePortfolio of all of their work. We have um, on the left over here library. Library has got any uh, motivational tips or study tips that can be used to keep them motivated and any course related information would then be found under the culinary studio tab. The students are also given a student handbook as well as a study guide. We encourage our students to be part of Facebook groups as well. We run regular um, events such as coffee and cake, webinars where we invite the students to join. The modules each course is broken down into a number of modules and this is all explained in the lesson plan which the students receive. Each module has got an aim with the learning outcomes, some material and at the end of each um, assessment, a full summative assessment. Throughout the course is also interspersed different surveys. These help us to manage the students expectations and to see how they're doing on their learning. The courses are broken um, so interspersed as well, we have a number of videos and we tr um, ensure that our students are fully dressed for the kitchen when they do their cooking. So they have to simulate a full commercial kitchen. And here's an example of one of the videos that they would get. Hi, I'm Chef Andy from International Culinary Studio. Today I'm going to touch on the chef attire. Hey chef, I'm here for duty. So within the program, there we have evaluation feedback. So we have um, the opportunity to see how the student is doing. Each of our modules also covers uh, sustainability, which enables students to be able to understand about sustainable food practice going forward. The questions we get asked most is about obviously how the practical works. We do expect our students to do industry placement and we have full evidence collection, diaries, etc. for them to complete. The cold food presentation, I'm just going to give you an example. I'm going to show you the support material that the student would that have access to. So all of the videos for every single one of the skills that they would be required to do each one of the um, equipment that they could be asked to use and all their commodities. They have all they need to do is go into the search engine under the support material and they can find that. So here is an example of all of the equipment that they would have information about. Just going to pick one. So each one shows the <coughs> usage, work health and safety and how to clean and store the actual item. The um, commodities are similar. So this would tell you about storage and the purchasing size of each item that the students could get used for to, could be asked to use. And let's just use a coconut cream, for example. That shows you the category, the grouping, the storage, temperature, purchase, specs, menu uses, and also quality signs. So looking for spoilage. So within our glossary, this is a full, very, very comprehensive glossary as you can see and each one of the items is listed as well as a description and if we click on the little audio, à la carte. we can actually hear the French, Alors, oui. the French pronunciation as well. All right, the students would obviously get asked to do a recipe. We always say our students never miss a lesson because the recipes are always available for them to look at over and over and over again. So let's just do avocado, avocado rather, avocado and orange salad. So as I said, the recipe can be printed. Cut the washed, peeled, and rewashed carrots. Washed celery, leek, and capsicum into julienne. Right, so if it says, for example, into julienne, they can then go to skills and they can type in <coughs> julienne and it will then show them what is meant by julienne. The ingredients list can be changed. So if you are serving 
uh, number of people, you can change your ingredient list to support that. The method is very self-explanatory and there's also little images showing exactly what the outcomes are that would be expected from the student. So the um, they've got a full toolbox of support material that they can obviously use. This, the program is set up to enable students to be able to work at their own pace. As a student is required to be in full chef gear in their kitchen, and once they've had a look at their support material and seen all the recipes, they then will submit their evidence. Evidence would consist of a workflow, would consist of food costing, and photographs as well as a video of themselves actually preparing food, which the chef and sister will instruct, give them feedback on. They also complete a self-assessment. This is how we assess taste, and the self-assessment um, is completed after they have completed their task and the chef instru instructor will also <coughs> check to ensure that what they experience is in line with what the dish should look and taste like. We also request the students to do good, um, excellent plating techniques and that would be something that we would cover in one of our um, online sessions with the students. And so there's an example of a self-evaluation that they would submit. The students, each practical has got a rubric where the students get marked against that so they can see exactly what the requirements are for that they will be marked against. So just back to modules. As you can see, the program is full, a fully comprehensive program. Our programs have all been accredited both in New Zealand and globally through World Chefs and Sitting Guilds in the UK. And we have a number of students literally from all over the world studying with us at the moment. We are offering the opportunity for other colleges to use our system and we can tailor make it to fit your college or your program that you would like to offer. There is um, this particular module, as you can see they've got 15 different modules and at the end we also give the students a mock exam to prepare them for the exam. We currently bring our students into an exam centre for a final practical exam theory exam is online and can be done anywhere around the world. Thanks for listening. <coughs> right, so there you have it. So we, we have a couple of minutes left. So is, does anybody have any questions for, for Ingrid um, about the, the presentation? There were quite a few questions in the chat. Um, which we've tried to answer. Can you hear me? Yep. Who organises the... Hello, Denise Charles from West London College. Who organises the work placement? You said they all do an industry placement. Who organises that? Is it down to the learners or are they supported in doing that? They, they certainly are supported in doing that. Um, obviously, we have learners from, if I'm taking New Zealand, for example, we have learners all over New Zealand. Um, and so sometimes they have their own contacts. Our chef instructors would verify that work placement because obviously we don't want a student just going into a mom and pop cafe or something like that where they're not going to get the relevant experience. So our chef instructors will make sure that um, the work placement is relevant. Um, if the student is struggling to find a work placement, we certainly do get involved and assist them in finding that. Okay, and how long is that work placement for? Again, it depends on the course. For example, if we're looking at an NZQA level four qualification, the student is expected to do 120 hours in industry. Um, if a student is doing a, a global certification and it's a brand new student who's never been in industry before, then also there they would have to do a lot more in industry before they could get their digital badge. For example, they would need to be showing at least a three months in industry. So it depends on each student. There is that, that um, flexibility if the student has already got some work experience. Okay, and is that paid or unpaid or is it up to the employer? 
Well, it yeah, it's up to the employer. Um, some of the employers um, will pay, others won't. You know, if, if the student just, it's important for them to, in order to get their qualification, to have the work experience, because without that ticked off, the student doesn't get the qualification. So, um, you know, if they can't find work experience where the employer will will pay or at least contribute to travel costs, etc., and the student's prepared to to work for free, then then they would. So it's it's very variable. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. I think it's important to uh, I think it's important to um, understand that the the platform is a platform and. The students will still belong to the delivering organisation. They won't be they won't be um, registered to the International Culinary School. Right. The International Culinary School provides the, uh, the the platform. So any any decisions on how you structure your course, uh, where where work placements are placed, um, the length of those placements, how things are assessed is all down to you. This is really a tool um, to put together a blended learning approach. So it's very much yeah. bespoke to the colleges and, and the organisations. Yeah, as you can see, we actually, um, that demonstration, we put the West London College logo on there, purely so that you could see how easily um, we can adapt and, and make it look like your learning material. And we can look at your curriculum, we can map it, we can, you know, um, work with you in order to, to put the programme together that um, would suit your educational establishment and we'd be very happy to have those discussions with you pleasure denise i saw you doing this pleasure <laughs> okay well um if anybody would like any more information about the 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 module um the, and the platform um please get in touch and ingrid and her colleagues will, will be more than happy to um provide a, a much more detailed overview of the of the platform um because we've been so pushed for time today that uh, we probably haven't given it um, proper justice. But Ingrid's put her uh, email address into the chat there. So please, anybody, we'll, we will uh, record this chat and share it with everybody so that you've got all the information from today and also the, the feedback from the, from the polls. Um, but we have got to the end of the hour now. So um, thank you, Ingrid, for sponsoring the session. Um, Only and, a pleasure, um, yes. Thanks for, thanks for getting up so early to join us. Mm -hmm. um, and thanks to everyone else no for at all. participating. I, I've got a couple of extra um, handouts um, just and, and, and leaflets that uh, I was going to share, but we've run out of time. But I'm also going to um, organise for them to be um, submitted and, and circulated to, to everyone so that you can use them as, um, as, as little guides or as you see fit. OK, so um, I think there's loads more work we could do in terms of blended learning going forward. And one of the things we'll do is evaluate at the end of the conference uh, exactly how we're going <coughs> to gather all this information um, so that we can we can plan for future CPD events. Um, so so thank you, everybody. Um, but we're going to have to call it a day there because we're just about to start the, the next session. OK, so thanks, Ingrid. And um, please send our thank you, regards to to everyone in New Zealand and South Africa, and uh, we'll catch up soon. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.